I felt as if I honestly came to a brick wall in the middle of the street I was walking down. And I felt the Lord say, Sheila, you can't go one more mile holding mm -hmm. this. Wow. You can't go one more yeah. step holding this. Yeah. You have to give this to yeah. me. Yes. And probably three o'clock in the morning, I get down on my knees in the street. Wow. And I'm like, Jesus, I don't understand this and I don't yeah. like this. But I give this to you and I choose to forgive him. And I talked to my husband this morning <laughs> and I said, I'm leading off the conversation on grace and forgiveness. And he said, are they giving you the whole hour? <laughs> like, no, there'll be other, <laughs> others contributing. I'll be working on forgiving that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. But I have to say, it's been a really key thing in our marriage. Um, before Barry and I got married, we went for, for counseling, for premarital, I was, 38 and he was 31. There were certain things that were kind of, we both wanted to find out what are your non-negotiables? What are the things that are just, and for me, one of the things was that we stay financially accountable. Mm. You know, I, my, I was raised by a widowed mom and we never went into debt. She never paid one penny of interest in a credit card. Wow. It was just really fiscally responsible. And I said, that's really, really important to me. Mm. And, and Barry agreed. And so maybe, I don't know, six, seven years into our marriage, I had done some work for a, a company outside of what I was regularly doing. And they'd asked if they could pay me weekly as I went along. I said, no, no, it's just, you know, maybe give a gift at the end. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that this gift was coming and I had already determined that, I mean, it was quite a few thousand dollars. And I, there's six or seven women around the world who we underwrite some of their ministry. And I, I wanted to send it to each one of them and say, okay, this is not your support money. Wow. This is, fun money. You know, go buy yourself a new wardrobe of clothes, yeah. go yeah. buy yourself a cat, get clothes yeah. for your yeah. cat, whatever you want, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I was really excited about coming in and I knew the check should have arrived. And so I went to my sister and I said, hey, you know, the check arrived and she paused and she looked at me and she said, Sheila, it's, it's already gone. And I'm like, what do you mean it's already gone? Yeah. You know, we have, and she said, yeah, it's already gone. You need to talk to Barry about that and the other things. And I was speaking at a conference that weekend and I felt this is not a conversation I want to have yeah. over the phone. No. Uh, so I, I waited till I got home and then we sat down and I said, hey, you know, I was told that the check's gone and there's other things. And it all kind of tumbled out. You know, we had moved into a new house and I would go off on the weekends and I'd come back and all the light fixtures were different. I mean, there'd be chandeliers and mm -hmm. different rugs and mm -hmm. carpets and I'm like, and he said, it was just a trade off for the builder. We just, ch you know, changed. And I'm like, but I realized we were really financially in a hole. Mm. And um, there was other things. I was just like, this is devastating. Mm. And because of my father's death by suicide when I was young, it just brought up all these issues yeah. in me. Mm -hmm. Because after my father's death, we lost our home. We lost our car. Yeah. We lived in housing provided by the government. Mm -hmm. We were the poor kids in school. Mm -hmm. And just all this unresolved stuff mm -hmm. kind of, and I was so angry. Mm -hmm. And and it's one of those things, it's like a non-starter really. It's like, why did you do this? And mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry, I know I should. And it was just like, we were getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. But something began in me that was really not good. Mm -hmm. I, rather than saying, hey, we need to go talk to somebody because I'm struggling here. I just, a little part of me shut off. You know, like I'd learned to do as a child. I just, no. And so I just shut up. And it was almost, oh, it was almost as if winter settled on our home. And, and my concern was for our son as well, because he was young and I thought he's going to sense he's a very intuitive child. And, and so, um, I talked to Christian and I said, you know, can we help you with any of this? And he was like, no, mom, it's okay. And, but later that night, um, I tucked him into bed and I was sitting on the edge of his bed and I said, baby, are you okay? And he looked at me with these big brown eyes and he said, mom, you have to forgive him. Mm -hmm. You know, like seven, eight year old child. Wow. Mm -hmm. Honest heart. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I knew he was right. But I didn't want to. Yeah, right. And so I kissed him and he went to bed and I said to Barry, I'm going for a walk. And like 11 o'clock at night, I go out and I'm walking my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 
I'm arguing with God. And I'm like, I know I'm supposed to forgive, but this is not fair. We agreed mm -hmm. on this. This is not mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. And the more I walked into that, I felt as if I honestly came to a brick wall in the middle of the street I was walking down. And I felt the Lord say, Sheila, you can't go one more mile mm -hmm. holding this. Wow. You can't go one more mm -hmm. step holding this. Yeah. You have to, to give this to yeah. me. Yes. And probably three o'clock in the morning, I get down on my knees in the street. Wow. And I'm like, Jesus, I don't understand this and I don't yeah. like this. But I give this to you and I choose yeah. to forgive him. And it honestly felt like some huge boulder yeah. rolled mm -hmm. off me. Gosh. And I ran home and it's 3.30 in the morning. I wake him up and I'm like, <laughs> I forgive <laughs> you. <laughs> like, oh, <okay. laughs> but it was, wow. it was a turning point yeah. in our relationship wow. because as long as I, there was nothing he could do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. could make determinations to, to change, yeah. which he did. Yeah. He sought yeah. counseling, which he yeah. did. Yeah. Right. But unless I, by the grace of yeah. God, because yeah. it would only have been with his grace, was yeah. able to, to yeah. release it to the Lord. That's right. And I began to study and see, I think so much, so many of us in the church are crippled by unforgiveness. Oh. Mm. And it limits the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to yeah. move. Mm -hmm. And we went one more time several years later, totally different issue to a counselor. And I said to Barry, let's take separate cars. And he was like, why would we take some, we're coming back to the same house. And I'm like, because I might not be speaking to you on the way back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, Okay. okay. <laughs> and he knew it was a serious issue too. Yeah. And we're driving there. Um, I'm driving in my own car and I, I'm talking to the Lord and I'm like, Holy Spirit, do not let me walk in there by myself. If I walk into this yeah, session by myself, yeah, not gonna be good. nothing good That's come true. from this. So I'm asking, you've promised good. to be a counselor. You've yeah. promised to be a comforter. I need you. And I remember walking in and Barry was there and our counselor said to him, how are you doing? And he said, honestly, not good. And the counselor said to me, and how are you doing? And I said, I'm, honestly, I'm kind of done, you know? Yeah. And he said to me, let me tell you a story. He said, I have a client. And he came in one day and I asked him, who is your closest friend? Who's your best friend? Mm. Who do you count on most? And the gentleman said, my tailor. He said, your tailor? Why do you like your tailor best? And he said, because every time I go, he takes fresh measurements. Ooh. And he looked at me and he said, Sheila, can you take fresh measurements? Wow. Oh, and goodness. it was just the grace wow. and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Say, yes. Mm. Wow. I can do that. Yeah. Because if we don't forgive, mm -hmm. it's, it's like 1 Corinthians 13 yes. keeps no record yes. of wrongs. Yes. And that has been revolutionary in our marriage. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's and, and Barry's had to do that with me. Yeah. Times when I've of been course. in a negative dark us, place yeah. 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 And, yeah. and he's had to forgive me mm -hmm. that forgiveness and grace in marriage mm -hmm. are huge. Practically keeping no record of wrongs, that is very difficult. But what I love is that the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. And there's another part in the Bible that says, nothing is impossible with God because he, I feel like God loves to work with impossible situations. And I think sometimes when we've been wronged and things have been done to us, it does seem impossible to extend grace, to extend forgiveness, to, um, to love. And I believe that God is calling us to walk in love and forgiveness toward each other and that it's actually possible to not forget, because we can't forget the wrongs that people have done to us, but to daily, yeah, daily, to extend forgiveness and to say, God, today is a new day and I'm feeling the sting of that wrong and I'm tempted to want to keep, keep a list of these wrongs, but Lord, I give it to you. And I think that if we can just get in that rhythm and that habit of giving to God the hurt that we're feeling, He can transform it, He can change it, He can do something beautiful in the depths of our soul as we continually run to Him, continually give our hurt to Him. Forgiveness was not always easy for me. Mm. I was the toughest one. And I, you know, 
And maybe Deborah can just lay me down somewhere. (laughs) 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 But I have, it's like this spirit of stubbornness, you know, comes over me. And it's like, I just refuse to bow. Mm. I've gotten much better over the years, let me tell you. It's been 38 (laughs) years, so I'm much better. But typically, it's usually Mike who would come back faster, even when he wasn't even wrong. Mm. And that began to minister to me. I'm like, wow, he's standing up, taking responsibility for something that he really didn't have anything to do with. So it made me really like check myself. And a lot of times people quit, they give up. Like, okay, I'm not going to keep taking the blame for this. But he just stayed constant and consistent with it. And it really began to penetrate my heart. And I'm saying, wow, he is such a representation of who Christ is. That's great. Like, yeah. if we don't forgive, how do we expect, the scripture mm-hmm. says, that Christ to forgive us? And we always want to pass, but we don't want to give a pass. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 You know? right. And I, I had to, to learn that because mm-hmm. I, I, I know for a fact that I was just wrong a lot of times, mm-hmm. you know, just, just wrong. But just would not just mm. I apologize. Like, yeah. I repent. I like One time he told me, he said, he did something. He came back and he said, I'm sorry. Me, smart mouth. I said, <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you nah. say that. <laughs> and from that point on, he said, I'll never yeah. say I'm sorry again. So he never says I'm sorry. He always says, Hey, I apologize. Wow. Oh, I repent. Yeah. He said, I will never have that confession over me. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's it's something we do have to become yeah. learnable. I know. Yeah. Because yeah. like yeah. you say, it's like you can't even have a flow. We can't even allow Holy Spirit to come in and do whatever he wants to do if we are constantly yeah. trying to fight yeah. and defend our yeah. position. Mm. Yeah. It's like yeah. we have to get to the place where we say, okay, God, I don't care who is right. I care what's right. Right. That's good. Like, yeah, that's good. Let's let's make this happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever find like forgiveness is not always a one time event? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, sometimes you have to forgive the and then the next day I choose to forgive again. By yeah. act of my will, I choose to forgive. Yeah. yeah. It's an ongoing process, mm-hmm. not just a I feel like it moment. Right. right. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I, if not, if it wasn't a daily, then Christ wouldn't have put it into the Lord's Prayer, you know. Mm-hmm. Every day, forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors. And I've had to find, I found myself several times, like, even when I've had to forgive someone else, I've been wrong myself many mm-hmm, times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but then when you're having to forgive someone, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't feel like it, but I'm like, okay, Lord, you said, forgiving my debts as I, in the same manner, to the mm-hmm. same degree that I forgive someone else. And I'm like, well, I can't afford for you to, to forgive me halfway. Mm-hmm. I need complete forgiveness. Mm-hmm. So then that means I can't afford to forgive them halfway. Right. Mm. And so then I also find myself like, okay, now I have to list who and what I am forgiving. So I choose to forgive as an act of my will, so-and-so right. for so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Help me to walk it out today. Help me to, to know what it feels like, what it speaks like, what it acts like, what it does and does not do. And I find that when I've done that, it makes it easier and then it makes it easier the next day right. if that person offends me again in the same mm-hmm. way to I choose by an act of my will. I mean, like, but yeah. why does he, why did, why did God have to put it in the scriptures that we I have know. to give them, forgive them so many times? Oh, no. that 70 times? Seven, 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 mm-hmm. seven, and for like twice. Why not just, just, just two times? Yeah, just two, two. Time. That'd be good. Yeah, one time, two mess up. But I've been on that one time to them because in those days, according to the Jewish Talmud, you, if a person wronged you, could forgive them once, twice, three times. If they did it in the fourth, you don't have to forgive them anymore. So Peter thought he was up in the ante. Ah. You know, do I have to oh, give them seven, seven times? times. Ah. Expect God to say, oh, nice <laughs> yeah. 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 But it was like, no, 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 we're not working on that math mm, anymore. Right. Like I got a new math. We're right. working on infinity here. Mm-hmm. The only time in scripture where we see the phrase forgive and forget is when God talks about how he views our sin. So here's what's important to understand. When we're talking about forgiveness, we're not saying that somebody hurting you again and again and again is okay. Because there are times in life, and specifically in marriage, when you're in a relationship that's abusive, when you're in a relationship where you're being harmed, when you're in a relationship where the 
where there's a pattern of toxic behavior, it's important to understand that forgiveness doesn't just mean forgetting and moving on with life. You can forgive and set boundaries. You can forgive and distance yourself. You can forgive and still find ways to protect yourself and keep yourself safe. So it's not just about forgiving and forgetting. There is a consequence to unhealthy and negative behavior. And I think you have to ask yourself a couple questions. Number one is, is this a consistent pattern of hurt? And number two, how severe is this pattern of hurt? Because the more consistent and the more severe, the more you realize that it's not just about forgiveness, but it's also about forgiveness and boundaries. I think unforgiveness is something that's way more common as believers than we want to admit. Because if you've been hurt, if you've been wrong, and particularly if the person's not even sorry, it can be so hard to choose to forgive. We want them to come and say, what I did was terrible, please forgive me. And that's not always possible. I talked to so many young women who were sexually abused by family members who've now passed and they, they can't go to the person and confront them. But you are not left carrying that unforgiveness. That's something that Jesus invites us to bring to Him. It's something you can lay at the foot of the cross and you don't have to carry it anymore. The Lord has forgiven us and we can learn to forgive. If, when you choose to do that with literally a choice of your will, it's like dragging your will in line with the Word of God. You are the one who's set free. I think sometimes we think forgiveness is for them. It's yeah. for us. It's for us. Yeah. Forgiveness is for mm. us. It frees yes. us. And yes. when I, you know, mm. hearing your story about when you were younger and like how hard it was to forgive, I think for me, there's two reasons why it can be hard to forgive. I would say the first one is pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, I would never do that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, almost forgetting my own sin yeah. and my own place mm -hmm. in my relationship with God and how yeah. much He's forgiven me. Mm -hmm. But I think the other aspect is a little bit of self-protection, mm -hmm. self-preservation. Yeah. 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 Like, I am not going to forgive because... Deep down, I think there's some fear, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, I got to protect myself. Mm -hmm. Both of those are wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. and both of, those, both of those keep us in unhealthy, bitter, dangerous yeah. places. So really forgiveness is for our good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it I, doesn't mean that what the person did was okay. That, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive, Absolutely. but you're not saying that was okay. And consequences right. are yeah. different than forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we teach our kids when they apologize to each other, for the other person not to say, it's okay. So if I were to say to you, I'm sorry, Sheila, and you respond, it's okay, we always say to our kids, don't say it's okay, but say, I, I forgive you. you. Yeah. Because no, it's not okay. It's not okay. That's, that's way better. It's not okay, but I choose yeah. to that's forgive good. you anyway. It's yeah. Really good. Wow. Yeah. It's really wow. good. I think yeah. how you're talking about um, the daily uh, walking in forgiveness, I think for me personally, um, I internalize. So like I don't... Um, outwardly like talk through things I'm always like thinking about so my husband is very much a verbal processor mm -hmm. so he just talks it talks it talks it all I think a lot of our couple friends like I'm more like the guy and mm -hmm. Levi is yeah. more like the girl mm -hmm. um yeah. but like I'm just more internalized so yeah. I and for me I think through all the things that either I did or someone else did you know that like oh why did I say this or why mm -hmm. what they did and kind of playing that over and over again and I think what's so needed about walking daily in forgiveness is you're bringing that back up and bringing it to the Lord. Like you said, it's like, I can't, I literally cannot carry this. Yeah. I have to give it to God because I, I'm not strong enough. Nope. Yeah. And so I think it just reminds you that yeah. you're not the one that's meant to carry these things. Yeah. He, he wants, and just the fact that forgiveness really is for us and yeah. brings healing but yeah. mm -hmm. on that daily yeah. thing too like you're saying um it, it, it like you said the fresh measurements yeah okay mm -hmm. i think we need to remember that i need to remember that because you can think okay well god i was really good at forgiving when this one was beating me up i forgave him the whole time mm -hmm. this one over here not being faithful i forgave him the whole time mm -hmm. Then you get into a situation where you disagree about politics. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you're like, I'm mad at you. I don't want to talk to you. It's like, <laughs> and it's like fresh measurements. Like you can't yeah. go off of even past successes yeah. or feeling as if, 
well, I mastered it mm -hmm. then, so mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is a daily, it's what's going mm -hmm. on before you. What is it that, you know, the past events should help it, mm -hmm. make it a little easier for you to do today, mm -hmm. but it doesn't exonerate us from having to make a decision to forgive right. today is what I'm trying to say. And sometimes what we refuse to forgive is really minute compared to what the, the hurdles God has gotten us over mm -hmm. and the grace that he's actually given us, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I that's good. I think it's interesting that you, those relationships, don't you think you feel safer not forgiving somebody who's a good person? Yeah. Then yeah, somebody sometimes was, somebody in your life who was not a good person, yeah, it's yeah. almost like, you know, I, I have to forgive you because absolutely. it's not mm -hmm. a safe place. Yeah. And then you end up- I Had the luxury. <laughs> yeah, on, the, on someone who's maybe made a small, because yes. I, I know in my own life, when my reaction is out of proportion to what's actually happening, there is history involved. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yes. yes. oh, absolutely. We call those emotional sore spots yeah. in yeah. counseling. Mm. Yeah. It's like, it's a black and blue spot, but yeah. they didn't cause it. They're exactly. just pushing on it. Yeah. Right. And it's causing some absolutely. sort of a reaction yeah. out of proportion with what's happening. Yeah. Where's yeah. this coming from? Yeah. Mm. And Sometimes how much of this is on too. you? Sometimes yeah, I, I don't I, want to back down. It's not even, right, I'm no, mad at good. you. I'm just, I, don't, right. that, I want to be right. No, that was yeah. totally me. I mean, the whole pride, thing yeah. it's like yeah and the protection so mm -hmm. i was working with both of them never felt really covered because of what has happened you know in the beginning of the relationship was just so bad it's just it's just the treatment so i felt like okay i gotta protect myself mm -hmm. i'm not going to allow myself to be vulnerable to be hurt again and yeah. so i put up this wall and then i played so hard like it didn't bother me yeah. well it, it did yeah. bother yeah. me it was yeah. tearing me up on the inside and then it it was the smallest things. That's I mean, what I'm saying. That's yes, the dumbest, dumbest things. That's what I'm talking no, about. So much so. Yes. When you go to sleep, you wake up in the yes. morning and you say, wait, I was mad. About what? Sleep what were we mad about? What, <laughs> why, why, am I talk, why am I not talking to him? Why? Uh, <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> it was why? 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 It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. You know, so real. You, it's like, it's again, we want yeah. people to be more for us, then we are willing to be, be for them. them. I think sometimes we can get lazy in practicing forgiveness, or we can sometimes take good for granted, and we need not do it. I mean, I have a great husband. No lie, he's great. Is he perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. But is he great? Yes. So, um, but sometimes it's easy to be slack in that forgiveness thing and not want to give it, wanting to give it quickly. Like, I know I'm gonna have to forgive you. So it's not an option of me living in unforgiveness. It's not an option. It's not an option for him either. But sometimes because you have, you know, you feel like I've passed the big test of forgiveness. I've forgiven this, I've forgiven that, I've forgiven this, I've forgiven that. But sometimes we can think erroneously that I've earned a pass to kind of be like, whew, I don't have to do it as frequently and as often as I used to, so I can take my time in granting it. But that's never, that's never the case. We are called to give it. Um, even quicker than we have in the past. And so I'm finding myself um, in a place where I'm not allowing myself and I'm challenging myself to say, no, do the work now. Forgive quickly, forgive now. Don't let it fester for the next couple of hours of I'm in my feelings because of something little. I'm telling you something dumb on the skills of forgivables, okay? Um, and so um, for me, it's, it's a thing that I know that we continue to grow in, but it is a daily thing that we have to activate. So we can't say, because I forgave in the past, therefore I never have to use that gift or exercise that in the present or the future. We must continue to do that, and that's day by day. And when we do it, it keeps things fresh. But what about when it's not in marriage? What about it's just in friendships? The same! Mm. Yeah, I mean, in friendships it can be... I re and this, I wouldn't even consider this person a friend anymore, but when we did our... I came to America as a contemporary Christian artist mm -hmm. and I brought my band from the UK and we did this tour of America, which was, you know, really successful. And so quite a bit of money was made with the, prom her. <laughs> <Do your thing. laughs> with the promoter at the end um, who ran away with all the money, didn't pay the band, didn't pay the lighting, wow. didn't pay the sun, didn't pay anything. And I remember calling him and saying, you know, you can't do this. You're a believer. How can you do this? Mm -hmm. And his thing was, sue me, I'll just file for bankruptcy and start oh, up wow. again tomorrow under a new name. And I struggled with that for, I had to go back to the UK and sell my house so that I could pay the guys that worked so faithfully oh, for me. Yeah. They were all yeah. married guys yeah. with families, you know, it was. 
The enemy knows your sore spots. You know, I know. The financial nope, that's exactly trigger right. that yeah. keeps coming up yeah. again and again. It's like the enemy knows that sore yep. spot. Yeah. And it's unbelievable. But it was interesting because I came to a place where I thought um, it was a lot of money. And I remember the Lord saying, Sheila, give it to me. Don't let it, him take it from me. Wow, Offer it to me. That's good. Wow. So I did. That's but. Good. Two years later, I'm at Estes yeah. Park at the Christian yeah. Artist Seminar, yeah. and I'm walking to talk at something, and I see him coming toward me. What oh. I was dealing with was what rose up in me. Yeah. And I was like, Lord, and I can remember falling to my knees in this field, saying, Lord, what was that about? And he said, Sheila, you gave me the debt. You didn't give me the debtor. Ooh. And it was like this another wow. level of wow. not just oh, that, wow. but I need to That's forgive deep. him. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. he, up until this moment, he's never apologized, never said. And wow. sometimes people feel trapped because they're like, well, you're, they're not sorry. Mm-hmm. I yeah. need them to be sorry. You yeah, don't nope, need them nope. to do it. It's yeah. wonderful, mm-hmm. but you, you can deal it. with it at the foot mm-hmm. of the cross. Right. Wow. You can say, I choose to forgive That's because right, of Sheila. the things I'll never understand, mm-hmm. the weight yes. of what I have been forgiven, wow. and let it go. And it frees us. Yeah. yeah so, so here's yeah. a twist to this, and I'm going to ask a question and kind of see what you all are thinking. And I, this is something I struggle with, too. But I'm thinking of the women who are listening and they're in marriages where they keep getting hurt Mm -hmm. again and again and again. Mm -hmm. The pornography addiction that's Mm -hmm. not going away. The alcohol abuse, the domestic violence. And I don't want to pretend that those situations don't exist in the church. Mm -hmm. They they do. Gosh, they sure do. Absolutely. And so they're hearing the message of forgive, 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 forgive. And I I guess I want to turn the tables a little bit and make sure that we're being clear, you know, and and maybe you can speak into this a little bit because you even talked about forgiving your first husband Mm -hmm. from there's abuse, domestic violence, all the things that you mentioned. But forgiveness didn't mean he just forgot it all. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness didn't mean he didn't deal with it. And forgiveness Mm -hmm. didn't mean he didn't close the door and keep yourself safe, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe talk us through a little bit of like, can you forgive, but then still set boundaries? And what does that look like? Yes. Um, You know what? Uh, uh, First of all, great great question. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we have to remember too, like I said earlier, forgiveness is not the same as consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, if I wrecked your car, um, you could say you forgave me and not charge me for it. I wouldn't owe you another car but you could no longer give me a ride. Mm. That's the consequence of you no longer having a car. If somebody burns the bed down through unfaithful deeds, it's not that you hate them, but after a while, there's nowhere to sleep. Wow. That's a consequence. Wow. 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 And so um, even with Jesus on the cross, with the thief on the side, he forgave him, but he did not take him off the cross. He still had to bear the burden of the consequence. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got pregnant before I was married, Mm -hmm. you know, God forgave me. I was still pregnant and thank God he gave me a beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they're not the same. And sometimes we think that if I forgive, mm-hmm. then that means that I go back to, I stay in, yeah. I continue in the behavior wow. and not that I give this case to God wow. and God has the decision whether he wants to get or quit. That's God's decision. That's me handing it over to him. And then at the same time, knowing also that there's still a consequence here. And I ask God, what now? What do I do now? What's my next response? And so sometimes God will say, I'm going to cover you for a season as you're in it, you know, because I'm going to restore. Sometimes he says, while I'm restoring, I I may not restore the marriage. I'm restoring you Mm. and the marriage won't work. Love doesn't fail, even though sometimes marriages may fail, Mm. you know, Um, he's still working on you. And then other times God may say your season is up, you know. And I believe, and I've had to answer all those questions personally in my life. I've had to make hard decisions in those situations, yeah. but I didn't make them without the counsel of godly men and women. That's good. Wow. Without the counsel Somebody of that's pastors powerful. and friends oh, and people that were in authority over me that I could really say, okay, I'm submitting not just myself, but this decision mm-hmm. to you under the counsel mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And so with that help, I, I thank God He's able, He enabled me to make the right decisions although they were hard decisions. And at the same time, I still forgave. So it wasn't, even though I wind up getting a divorce, I still forgave my ass. They owed me nothing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I don't hate them. I didn't. I wasn't going to wish you ill mm-hmm. because I knew that regardless of what God had on the other side of a relationship status, that if he had something good for me, mm-hmm. I would negate it if I held on to unforgiveness. Because mm-hmm. you know that saying, those that you hate, half don't know, the other half doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Unforgiveness is the poison you drink hoping somebody else will die. Mm-hmm. And so we have to do our part in forgiving mm-hmm. and then allow mm-hmm. God to get or quit and the consequences to still play out. So well yes. good. Really, mm-hmm. really good. Wow. Coming from personal experience, like what you just said mm-hmm. is so inspiring. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. God's grace changes everything. And in my life, as I have even grown more and more in understanding that, wow, in my sin, God saved me. I mean, the fact that that Bible verse, I don't know where, but says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that just is mind blowing because while I was still stuck in my sin, not even having a thought about God, Jesus died for me because he loved me. And that's the same for you. That's the same for your spouse. That's the same for my spouse. And when you look at life, when you look at your relationships through the lens of God's grace, there's no offense, no um, frustration, no wrongdoing that would that could keep you from extending that same grace to them. And I think it's so important to every day live our lives in light of His grace, in light of His mercy, in light of His forgiveness. Because if we forget, then we'll just start thinking that we got to where we are because we've done this or we've, we're so good. or And then we start to see other people as less than because, oh, they haven't met this um, quota. They haven't done this for me. They haven't done this. But if we just every day say, wow, thank you, God, for your love for me. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for me so that I could have life, yes, in the future, so that I could hope in heaven, but that I could have life, an abundant life here and now. It changes everything and it changes how we view those in our lives. In the moment, if he says something hurtful, it's like the whole world is like, Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Like, does he love me? He doesn't love me. He's the worst. He's my enemy. I think we talked about that the other day. that you don't say that. (laughs) My girls know it. But when you take it in context of a life, and I think for me, my dad left. He was unfaithful to my mom. He left her after 30 years of marriage. Wow. And I found myself, especially earlier on in marriage, projecting that on my husband Mm -hmm. where my husband hadn't done anything wrong. But because my what I thought of a husband was was one that left, one that was not doing right things, one that was hypocritical, one, you know, and it was just like I had to come to a point where I was like, I need to see my husband the long term version of him. The fact that he is faithful. He is godly. He loves me. He cares for me. He protects me. And then in those little moments it's like, okay, this is just a little thing. thing. We'll we'll get through this. It's going to be fine. (laughs) And then seeing, okay, this is just the big picture. I I have to always be reminded of the big picture. I think we all do. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise we try and judge them by the Mm -hmm. micro (laughs) moment. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you need a time out. I've discovered that sometimes if Mary and I get into, and I have to say, honestly, Having how said the other Luke, things, please tell me how that's <laughs> what <laughs> you know, a long trip, or you just go in a room for a few moments. It depends. Okay, <laughs> All right. so, okay. Option. But I have to say, I mean, we've been married 27 years, and I love my husband so much more mm-hmm. than I did on the day yeah. I married him. Yeah. Yeah. He is actually my best friend. Yeah. He knows everything, mm-hmm. and it, it's mm-hmm. so fun to be yeah. together. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, if we get into something that's a hot button issue, mm-hmm. yeah. and recently it was the color of my son's hair, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of more of a Free spirit. I'm like, I dyed my hair purple right. and pink right. and all sorts of, right. and yeah. Christian's a little bit like that. Yeah. He's just yeah. a little more, you know, he'll, like his hair at the moment, he's bleached blonde and, <laughs> and Barry's like, you know, it, it's going to fall out. So, you know, if you want to <laughs> keep anything on your head, you know, probably. and so if we hit something that's a bit of a hot button, mm-hmm. I have learned to listen. I'll, I'll say, hey, look, let's, let's take a break. And I literally will, maybe son is going to the car, get in the car mm-hmm. and, and go grab a cup of coffee. Yeah. Not that his response is over, it's mine. Just need a minute, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I just, yeah. for some reason, there's certain things, like if it's something about how you look or how you're doing, mm-hmm. it just hits some yeah. black and blue spot on me. Mm-hmm. And and I just, and I know myself well enough to know 
Yeah. You know, I don't want to stay there and stay there and say things that are unkind, yeah. you know, because my yeah. husband is one of the kindest people yeah. I've ever known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'll just take and myself out, have a cup of coffee yeah. and come back and say, oh, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes like not. That. Yeah. No, that's, that's so good. needed. Just because yeah. we, I think so often we'll just speak out of what we're feeling, yeah. but right. to really just shut our mouth, mm -hmm. take a yeah. break. I love that. I love that just saying, I need a time out for a second mm -hmm. and not speaking out of the yeah. hurt. Not you need a time out. I right? need, yeah. not you, yeah. I need a time out. Just from my own experience, there is nothing on this earth that will help you become more like Jesus than being married because it hurts and it costs, and it takes you out of every comfort zone that you've ever relied on. I didn't really understand that at first. I just thought this is gonna be lovely, and we're gonna love each other, and we're gonna go for walks on the beach, and it'll probably bring me flowers every Tuesday. And then you hit these places where you think, okay, I wasn't gonna do that. I wasn't gonna say that. I fell down, and I failed. But the great thing about those of us who love Jesus, failure, is never final. We get to ask for forgiveness. And if you haven't been married for very long and you feel a little disappointed or a little disillusioned, can I just say to you, I get it. You're not alone. We all go through that. We all want things to be perfect. But what I've discovered is, I used to pursue perfection in every area of my life. I don't do it anymore. I pursue Christ who is perfect. So be patient with yourself, learn to forgive, learn to laugh together, learn to take a little breather if you need to, and then come back knowing you are both loved by God who has blessed your life together and is committed to getting you all the way home.